Get all up in it. All in there. Get in it. (laughs) Nice and deep. (laughs) Let's get into it. One, two, three. Hello, hello, <laughs> and the welcome extended to version. The extended right. version of the intro. <laughs> welcome to my whiskey den, your favorite public access whiskey review show, where craft whiskey is king. We are a proud part of the Bar Cart Co-op, and right, we're gonna get this done right out of the way. Mike, you're the best in the business at this. Do this, knock out of the park. <laughs> that nice voice. Here. Well, some some would some would steal it, but. Uh, <laughs> don't forget to like good. comment that I well, you know, that big I beg to differ. Like, comment, share, subscribe, hit the bell notification to find out when new episodes are, are going on. Uh if you're watching live on Monday, then tune in. Uh tune in with the crowd on the live chat. Um, mm-hmm. or if you're watching it after the fact, then uh you know, got someone sneaking down my stairs. I'm not right. not doing a very good job of it either. Ooh, introduce it. Put it on the spot. Come here. What? Huh? Since you're gonna do the get over here. I'm I'm trying to get my food. Your food <laughs> hidden. In, your food is hidden in the whiskey. Ah. What? <laughs> I'm trying to get my snack and my. Stuff okay, right do it quietly. She's well, hungry, Mike. Come we on. need that. We need that old uh, that old intro. Um, <laughs> I have school tomorrow, you know. I have work. I, I have. To, I need to bring my all lunch. Right, go. I'm packing my lunch. <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, while we're talking about disruptions, did you guys see Matt Bay's Instagram post this morning? I did not. I I haven't been on. Okay. Before we forget and and before I say something stupid, because you know I will. Mm. um, So there's three and a half days left to to vote for Matt on round one of this. Um, Matt put an Instagram post out because at four days left, they let another person join in on the voting or someone to vote for. And it is someone who is a maker with like 6,000 Instagram followers and YouTube channel. And she's great. She does great work. There's nothing wrong with her. Matt, he, he didn't call it out, but he's just like, Hey guys, we got to step it up because with four days left, they let her put her hat in the ring. And, you know, she has the ability to basically juggernaut the whole thing nothing against her again she's fine she's great um matt and her had an interesting conversation back and forth uh she was cool enough to say she goes matt i'm gonna give you my daily votes and she has sent some some people his way too but if you have not voted for matt or if you forgot to do it vote for him every single day there's like Mm -hmm. three days left um you know everybody would love 25 grand uh but matt's uh matt's matt's shoestring in this thing so and he's doing Help a great out. job at it too. So, right. and yeah, Matt is a hustler. <laughs> he is Matt can hustle. Well, I was going to say at some point here. Now that I finally have a little space behind me, we'll we'll finally see something going up there. Got some works. Got some plans. Some plans going on. A little design <laughs> works. A little design works. <laughs> ah. But uh, thank you, everyone in the chat, for stopping out this evening. I see there is a ton of people out there. I'm not paying attention to what I'm saying. Did I walk into some that's, again? That's probably a good idea. Yeah, I probably should walk around. I was going to say, speaking of age matters, I think that's slightly relevant to that anyway. Oh, I want... <laughs> Okay. Anyway. We're going to... We're going to start the show over here. Okay. Thank you, everyone, yeah. for stopping cool. in. We really appreciate Don't forget it. to like, comment, share, subscribe. Hit the bell <laughs> notification. Yeah. All right. So we are here tonight. Do all the shit. Yeah. <laughs> Don't be a jerk. Yeah. We are talking about 
does age matter in whiskey? And this is an inter- this comes down to some interesting things because I put, I think some factors get intertwined here or can be dissuading. But uh, I might let one or two of you guys first first let's cheers everyone in the chat. I, I need a drink. We're not any under constraint to drink anything cheers. in particular tonight. I've had a long day, so we're gonna and I am starting off and cheersing with something I have not touched in a long time. This absolutely beautiful Rua 16 month old single malt that blew everybody's doors off <laughs> and continues to do so. I'm dropping in some Lost Lake from Crooked Waters. That's what I'm doing. Mike's getting a bottle of that in the mail. And Miss Emily Chambers, who, ooh. How ironic is that that she pops it up just as I'm mentioning her is going to be getting her bottle because the mule has finally arrived and, it can, and things can get are on good. their way. So, what do you got, Ben? I just popped the Maddie um, single Ooh. barrel coming in at 103.8. Hmm. All right. Okay. So, when talking about whiskey, I know on our show, we we have, uh, you know, hashtag age horse. Um, we, we have made fun of people who, who strictly look at age as a determining factor, as if whiskey is good or not, if it's not past 4, 6, 8, 12, 15, 23, as if at some point it doesn't over oak. Um, but were you, we sound like in my opinion, it, it, we sound like the champion of younger whiskey. And then sometimes I think that that might not be always the case because sometimes better grains and better production methods will create a better distillate as well. So and it's not just that age, age doesn't matter, does or doesn't matter. There are some other factors. So I, in my opinion, I think age matters all the time but so does using much better grains or tactics to create the alcohol so creating a better distillate in the first place some things can be two or four years old and putting stuff down that's 10 or 15 years old well when this stuff like in wisconsin when you finally get past about five years with bourbon in my opinion you really start to see a a unique progression or a big step into like this is some quality stuff um and it is earlier than in some other parts of the country. Um, I'm, I'm going to, I don't want to dominate things. So I'm going to kick off that. That's just my, in general, overall thought. We can get into different areas, like say Texas with the heat and the quickness of age and how that turns. But just, I think it does matter more than people think. Age, I think here's my take. Age does matter but maybe not necessarily in the way that people want to think of it. They think hear the term age matters. They think, well, you're only referring to older whiskey. No, younger whiskey can be great. So age matters. Um, But it's, yeah, there's a lot of factors going on here uh, to determine how that age matters. And I think that's what we're going to try to, uh, to sift through and uh, get some, get some good information and facts going as well as some great examples. I think that demonstrate how age matters, both long term and short term, and middle of the road, and all in between. So, yeah, I, I I think I mean there's actually I think there's a couple of arguments within. I mean, one you could say, does the age on the label matter? Should that does that indicate that it's good whiskey? Right. You know, which in a lot of cases, no. I mean, yeah. it's just not. But some people really like 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 oaky profile. They sure. like that. Um, but you don't you know, have to have like, age to get that necessarily either. No, no. And, so and, the, and the people that are, uh, I'll say the people that are in the chat consistently with ours, you know, our chat, right. um, have all experienced younger whiskey, really good whiskey that, that doesn't have, uh, you know, your traditional double digits on it. Um, and under, understand that, yes, there, there is a difference, but there's, you know, um, which I, I was telling Ben a little bit before the show, my one of my arguments would be, I believe that there is a a way of making whiskey that requires that it has time in the barrel 
before you're going to want to drink it. And right. that, or, or it's, you know, look at the mash bill for, um, you know, Jim Beam, I, Jim Beam's got two main mash bills for bourbon. They got the normal and then the higher, higher corn and higher rye. Jim Beam White, I believe is the same mash bill as Knob Creek, as Booker's. <laughs> and look at the difference between, you know, between those. Again, a lot of people drink white, um, but there's a huge difference between white and Knob Creek. There's a, and a, and a, obviously a very large difference between that, all that and Booker's. Right. Um, but while Turkey, you know, while Turkey has two mash bills, period, and everything with their bourbon, the difference is age and location in the warehouse and the proof. Mm-hmm. And, and that's it. But it's made that way. It is designed that way. They're not going to change the way that they're making it. There's not a damn thing wrong with it, but it requires six to eight years before you're going to get it and you're going to drink it. Right. Uh, being, you know, you've got white, which is what, three years old. Right. And then, then uh, obviously the age stated uh, knob creeks. So, you know, you, then, uh, you know, makers is, they say six to seven, but it's all by right. taste, but they know based on how they're making it, it has to do this or they're not going to release it, but they're never going to change that. They will never, ever, ever change how they're doing that, but it requires them to make it that way in right. order for them to sell it. And they, sh- and they shouldn't change it because that's, that's what's made them who they are. And they have that recipe, they have that distillate, they have the whole process dialed in to get the result that they want. And that's yeah. bottom line, what it is. Um, what at the, the end of the day, what does the, what does the distiller want this product to be? And then what are all the factors that come into play and how are you, you know, how are you doing and manipulating all those to get to that end result that you're looking for? Um, so yeah, I yeah. kind of discuss a little bit of that from the distilling side as far as what goes in, uh, you know, what kind of things you can do just on distillation alone that are going to impact whether you're going to have a, a spirit or a whiskey that needs a shorter time in the barrel versus some that needs a much longer time in the barrel. And the, those factors all come into play. So, But with it, when you like when, when we were at Heaven Hill and, and not calling them out. But when you're talking about somebody at that at that scale, you know, or a scale right. even even sixty percent of their scale, um, it it is everything is done based on scale and volume. Number one, but they're not going to explore um, different yeast. They're not going to explore uh, like just trying out funky bottles, except on a smaller scale. I know that they have done it, but even still, small scale to them is just astronomical to other people. Right. They're not going to play around with a whole bunch of bunch of uh, different grains and mash bills because their bread and butter is churning that stuff out. Right. Um, so, but the formula works. It's fine. If you get a whole Elijah Craig barrel proof, it's great. <laughs> it's it's really it's really good whiskey. But they they couldn't compete if you were trying to go. I think on flavor, if you were going to do true blind with people and go off of flavor, and you put give us your most flavorful whiskey, everybody across the board. I think you'd find the younger whiskeys from other people that would, that would do extremely well or beat the larger companies. Right. In a true blind. Right. I agree with that, but this, it also leads into, and you mentioned for a second, like planning a whiskey, <clears throat> like going with a scotch, how many scotches are planned to come out at less than maybe 10 years or at least go back 10, 15 years. Mm-hmm. There wasn't many that weren't going to come out at, 10 years or a 10 or a 12 year old might be 10 or the 12 was usually the threshold. You're not seeing anything younger than if you did, nobody wanted to touch it. Yeah. So, so that's kind of, but that's because of where it's at. I mean, that's the climate. I'm just getting, I'm just getting into planning for it. So like when we were talking with American bourbon, like say Kentucky, I think most of the plans are for to land out at somewhere between seven to 15 years. It is where like you're, you're planning for most of the flavor to land at like to kind of hit in that section. Right. Where now, um, and it's going to be ne- neater to see what happens in Texas, but maybe there is, maybe their max out range where there's a, it might be closer to a 10 to 12 year and not getting to like a 23 year old, you know, or maybe like a 15 before, even with, yeah, techniques you know the oak might take over a little bit doesn't seem like it so far um 
because a lot of places are getting to that 10 year mark with a release of some some form um and they're just starting to get interesting and that's yeah. for me when, when we're talking about better flavors kind of coming from s- smaller distilleries that are do you doing unique things we're starting to see that hit kind of that minimum of five and on a lot of places you're getting almost to a 10-year mark from some places that are starting to put out a release say last three years and say over the next four you're going to see a lot of places putting out 10-year-old almost to the edge of 15-year-old stuff so when you're tasting that stuff all except for one it has been what you found was great at four and five years old the progression continued to progress the richness, the depth of the flavors kept going in that direction. So age matters, but I'm, I'm, oh, I think I'm on an argument at the end that like ingredients matter more, but age, it, age does matter. No We're starting to see no, that and- really pile on like with Jay Henry, with their five year versus what they did with their like say six to nine year old blend this year. It's, it's, it's three steps above, you know what yeah. I mean? It's, it's, but I'm, but look at also you know look at other Wisconsin distilleries up there. Wisconsin. The one thing they can get away with is a very young rye, and it's mm-hmm. a really really good, extremely young rye. But the bourbon, as as we found out with it, their bourbons require some age because of their mm-hmm. climate. And you know, Mitch had a comment uh, earlier about it, as age being an ingredient. Absolutely true. But when when you're when you are and not to sound biased or, or shitting on anyone, but you're one of the larger still distillers doing all I'll, I'll say generically saying column distillation, you're going to do it a certain way and you're going to do, you're going to have certain things in place that is not um, it's more industrial uh, put it that way. But then that requires you because you're making those choices, you're going to have to age it longer because you're doing it that way. So for them, I would say, yes, you could say, you know, age matters mostly, but then again, you have people that they'll drink Jim Beam white over Knob Creek, but that's, you know, personal preference, but clearly somebody's doing something right because they sell the hell out of it. Really? And that, this is interesting from Dave because yes. 18 is like, like the bread and butter for where like people kind of, for me, think like our seeking out the elijah craig 18 i think the older right. ones are definitely over oak i haven't had one in a few years so i can't i'm not going to speak to it so that's not I, was cool. gonna, I was gonna say this, this to me and eli even brings up an example of old fits so to me it, it can it's it's really all over the board uh, you can't you can't definitively say one way or another you know older is better younger is better there there's just there, there's so much because that Elijah Craig 18 year old to me, yes, I've had a bottle of that. And it was, I mean, it's just like licking an old barn door kind of thing. I mean, it's just, it's old wood. It's whiny. It's very resinous. It's very uh, tannic. Um, I didn't find it that deeply enjoyable. Um, but I sat down with a friend several weeks, so it's been maybe a couple of months ago, and we went through a flight of old fits uh, from some of the different 11 year, I think a nine year, all the way up to a 16 year. And, you know, which all of us that tasted it unanimously thought the best one of the batch was the 16 year old, hmm. which I was a little bit surprised at personally, but it was the better, it was the better of, of, of all of those. Um, another example is you brought up rye. I you love, will. I love young rye. Um, big mm-hmm. fan of it. I think rye at a young age is great, but a lot of people are familiar with pin hook. Um, the standard pin hook release is coming in at three years old. And when you taste it, it's a young rye mm-hmm. and it's not, in my opinion, it's not terrible, but it's also one of those, you just feel like it's, it's not fully developed. And so having had the opportunity recently um, of trying some of the, what, what I like, what I think is cool they're doing is this, their vertical series they do with the bourbon mm-hmm. and the rye. So it's like bottled at three years and they bottle at four years and they bottle at five yeah. years. Now they just released it where it's bottled at six years. And that rye distillate at six years has like turned another corner and has become absolutely stunning um, as a spirit. So, and you, you, in my opinion, you see a lot of MGP, 
uh, does the same thing. You see MGPs at four and five years and they're good. And then all of a sudden they hit that six year mark and it's like, holy cow, they just shifted gears into something else entirely. Um, there's just, but there's so many factors going in and it's the same thing, pot steel versus column steel, Mike, and mm -hmm. coming from, from a distiller standpoint. So a lot of the factors go into if you're, you know, Again, what are you? How long are you looking to age this for? Because if you're if you're running a pot steel and you're making these cuts, um, if you're going to make a broader cut, if you're trying to be a little bit more economic, you don't want as much waste, so to speak. So you're going to make a slightly broader cut um, on your hearts. And guess what that means? You've got a lot of volatiles. There are a lot of compounds that are you would see as negative, and those need time to break down, to oxidize, to you know change. And that's going to take more time in the barrel. So that's something that you put away that's going to age more. If you go to pull that at two years, at three years, it's not going to be as good. That really is going to need to hit that four year, six year or plus mark. And same thing, if you're looking that you want to release something at two to three years, then you make a much more narrow cut, a very clean cut. And uh, that spirit isn't going to need as much time in the barrel to really develop and break down the negative components that are there. Uh, to transform those into a more positive uh, tasting experience. So that, that factor comes into play as well. And then when you're running, you know, a pot steel is going to have a much more oily uh, distillate coming off versus column steel is a cleaner spirit there. I mean, you can certainly, you make, you do make a cut on the column steel. And so you could make a, an earlier cut and you've got a dirtier spirit and that's going to need more time in the barrel, or you could still make that cut a little bit later and uh and run it you know consistently clean and so therefore it's not going to need quite as long in the barrel but a lot of that is it's driven by economics you know too how much mm -hmm. you know you're making that cut because if you make that more narrow cut there's there's decent spirits in there that you cut out that you wasted that you're not using yeah mm -hmm. so yeah that's that all comes into play all those all those deciding factors and then i think to Patrick, what you've hit on the quality of grains uh, that are used have a big impact as well. The, the flavor components that they carry forth. Um, so I'm going back a lot, of Kevin, a lot of different things. Kevin brought up here. If a distiller doesn't know like how long to age a whiskey, that does pose a problem because mm -hmm. releasing something too early and Something I'll give David from uh, Wyoming Whiskey huge credit for admitting it. I mean, even in talking about it, that, he, you know, we were just drinking our stuff, you know, like, and a lot of places do that where you get used to it. And we got, you know, got put into a situation where it's like, oh, we got, you know, something's going on. I think someone was running for governor. I was like, we do the release and do it, you know, and you're like, go. And then, like, as soon as it came out, it was like, hmm, I would. I wish yeah. we would. I wish we had waited, you know, eight, you know, nine months to a year before we did. Um, and there, and there are several other places that do something like that, or like you mentioned, because of an economic issue, like it needs to go. You know, we need we need another thing out on the shelf. And sometimes, and I think that's what happened with a lot of places with craft whiskey with that those tones that people are used to, the connotations, the really negative stuff in the past. Right. Those were people trying hitting that section or learning it as well to, um, you know, a lot of spotification, obviously, just by the description of of most of the bad experiences. Right. Um, so, but I, I don't know. I, I think that plays another factor. Oh, and yeah, time, time to get another drink. And sorry, go on. If someone else wants to go off that, yeah. or you got another one. But, but, but I, I do think it, I mean, it is part of the recipe of it. Cause you, you know, we, we use this chart just like any other recipe that you're, you know, you're baking or what, you know, the, because we're making it this way, because we're using these ingredients and we're using this barrel, we know we have to do this to get this desired result. Right. But, deviating from any of those is going to throw the whole thing off. And when your whole purpose is taking those things and batching them and getting a consistency out of there, you're not going to, you're not going to deviate from it, but you also know, all right, these, these cookies have to bake for 17 minutes, you know, that because those are the one which that's too much for cookies and ask me how I know. Um, but you know, <laughs> but just, but you're, you're going to cook things for a certain period of time and you know, all right, in order to do this and cook it at this result on the, using this pan, these ingredients, whatever I've got to do, I've got to do this. It is, it is part of a recipe. However, 
there are people who uh like i just had the iron root the harbinger 2019 b which right. just so happened to be whiskey of the uh, world whiskey of the year or greatest bourbon in the world or whatever it was um, right. <laughs> 27 month old and i know especially with the um one being texas people you know people didn't give texas the respect for some of those whiskeys um but i think that that's an argument for a lot of people it's like mr mr iron root over here would like to uh would like to tap you on the shoulder, Mister. I'm only going to have 15 year and above whiskey, right? Um, right. Because clearly there were a lot of other people in, in judging that felt the same way. And that's where that's where you sit down and you can do a blind or you can just do a tasting or whatever, and you can say, "Here's this just over two year old Iron Root that'll beat the shit out of a lot of three and four and five year old Kentucky yeah. whiskeys, um, and even six year old or better." Um, I'll go same thing. The country because that's yeah. And then, you know, same, same difference. And you can, you can get something that's in a, you know, a 12 year range and sit down and it's, if it's been really well done and, you know, was prepped right from the very get go, they can be absolutely stellar and outstanding. It's not saying that they're terrible. I mean, but I've, I've sat here while I've been at Kentucky Artisan, we've had some samples pulled from barrels that were, it was well over oaked and well over aged and uh, not, not good. It's age, you know, yeah. It just it depends on what you're doing. Another example right here is I have Calumet Farm. This is a 14 year old, and to me, it's just an okay bourbon. Yeah, it's okay. Okay, it's not, it's not okay. great. I will take I'll take Iron Root. I'll take everything Alan does. Um, same with I'll that. Take which Kelly. is basically the same whiskey. <laughs> yeah, literally. I'll take. Pretty sure, I might, I'm pretty sure it is. I'll take Kelly's six month old Hartfield over that one. Hell yes. Um, so it, it's just, yeah, you could sit down and you could put some young stuff up and beat the absolute snot out of some older stuff, but, yeah. but then vice versa too. Just depends but, on what, what you're, what you're comparing to what. Get, talking about that with smaller distilleries becoming better and more prominent and taking up more shelf space. Right. I saw a recent buyout of a few distilleries that were taking up shelf space. And do you think, with more of the craft whiskey becoming older age and starting to seriously compete in people's minds as quality stuff, do you think there'll be more buyouts of smaller people? Because you're going to be seeing those people starting to get to that age bracket that we're talking about of like a 7 to 12 year whiskey. Right. It's I, possible. I don't... I don't... I, I think you'll definitely see buyouts, but one, one thing that will always be a problem for the smaller distillers is getting that shelf space because it's, mm -hmm. it's not the liquor stores that aren't giving them the shelf space necessarily. It's the distributors not buying it from them. And, you know, those distributors aren't picking up because, you know, I, I know I can sell X amount of cases of Jack Daniels every single day and I can sell X amount of cases of these, but, I, I might be able to move three or four bottles a day out of all these things. So which one are you going to carry? You're going to go with the easy money because that's your thing. And, you know, I'm not saying distributors are bad, but they are part of the problem with, with craft distillers. And you do have, um, you do have some good places like seal box uh, just because, you know, we've all used them. Uh, and there are others who carry craft whiskey that will get it to you. So you can try this stuff out. But they're not going to get the shelf space like other people to even compete, you know, and get their get their name out there yeah, to show start, that. But through on but through online stuff, they're starting to get more so. There's more distilleries hit, hitting yeah. some some distributors that way, and you're getting up to like 41 states, um, and that that's a big deal. I mean, hell, that's bigger than most people had before. Yeah. So, well, you, you all, but you also run into a problem like Iron Root had for a while. We're like, we don't have any whiskey. <laughs> it's, or, it's gone. It, or, or <laughs> yeah. we don't have any bottles. That was, well, that right, too. That, that but I mean, you know, but, but it's, you know, that's, that's a great problem to have when you can't get it into everybody's hands. But then you, know, you, you would hope when someone, if they get, there was a buyout that they wouldn't, that they would buy it out for what it is and not buy it out and, and ruin it. You would think so, but how <laughs> like Jim Bean with old crow. <laughs> Well, I mean, Old Crow had I gone mean, compared downhill to what, before yeah. Beam. Yeah, I mean, it, but, prior to Beam, old, old Crow went downhill. But, yeah, but you're right. And hopefully they bring it back like they have hinted. Right. I don't know if they can. 
I think it, I, I think he's a reputation. Do you, think, do you think Glens Creek could like copyright sue him because they have the no. original E strain? They're the ones that are currently using it. It it doesn't matter. I mean, it's it's saying. the name. Uh, right. Beam at the at their their craft distillery could come out with uh really i mean smart thing would be to come out with uh, old crow decanters you know or something else that mm, goes right, back to yeah. that old to make it different and say here they could i mean i i have every reason to believe that they could they could definitely create something that rivaled the old old crow they've got all the notes and everything else they might not have the e-string but they've got the notes for all that uh oh patrick's spitting already <laughs> no right. i looked back up at something that someone said and i'm I wasn't paying attention. <coughs> uh, I think I, I know what you're talking about. A whiskey pedophile. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it caught me for a second. I'll be honest. Uh, yeah, try getting back to what your thought yeah. process was. Take that. Take your thought process and run. Right. But you know, and and again, I I I have no problem with older whiskeys. The th the thing that it just seems like it's exhausting to me when because I've I've got a couple of really really good friends, but they still, and they're not doing it to irritate me. But they still, if they see something and you're like, you know, if it's got an age of it in the double digits, it's just like, oh, well, this must be good. No, right. <laughs> that's not necessarily true. Or you know, but the other thing which goes along with it, which is I know it's a different topic. If, if I said, here, try this whiskey, it's $27. And if I said, oh, and here, try this one, it's $200 a bottle. They're going to go the $200. One. Oh, man, this is great. Same thing if I right. said, hey, this is a 28-year-old whiskey or this is a six-month-old whiskey. It doesn't matter how good it is. It could be Kelly's Kelly's Weeded Hartfield, and they'd be they'd go for the over-oaked you know, old thing every single time just because they got it in their mind. It's older, it's better. It's more expensive, it's better. That's why I think when it comes, really, when it comes down, I'm going to change the whole, I'm going to flip this whole thing real quick. Uh, when it comes down to the consumer and the enthusiast side of things, it's not that age matters. Blinds matter. Mm -hmm. Blind pours, yeah. blind tastings. Absolutely. That's what really matters because yeah. it takes away all that, all those uh, pre predispositions and those uh, uh, just prejudices that you have or that you think you have. Oh, you those, just, you're just going I, straight off of what and, what and, what that is in front of you. So, and that's just for right now. I've got I've got a pour of two things, and I've been sitting here nosing back and forth. I know what they are, but at the same time, just going right off the nose, it's it's stunning to me the difference. And one is uh, the, that Maddie Gladden single barrel, and the other one is a single cast nation of wild turkey nine year old, and mm. uh, the Maddie Gladden's just knocking them pants off yeah. of right now on the nose i mean that, and that wild turkey is it's fantastic but yeah holy maddie smoke. doesn't the, the thing is maddie yeah. just doesn't play around yeah we're and yeah we're fans that, that just shows you where age doesn't is not necessarily equivalent to being better but but it yeah. does matter but but do you think that maddie as she ages will get better See that, and but that that's a good question, and that's that's where I go, and that's what pisses me off a little bit when I see people that will taste something like Maddie or they taste something like that that's already absolutely outstanding. And go, oh, I can't wait to see to taste this when it gets to ten years. Really? Because at ten years, it might be absolute oaked, oaked, over oaked yeah. shit. Um, I would for curiosity only to see well what happens to the same thing over time, but right. The way that that is the way, and we'll use her as an example. The way Maddie is set up, she's perfect. She's coming out she's, right, right. Coming out being made. bottled where where yeah. she's at, it's it's absolutely ideal. And to take that profile, and you're going to try to push it. I mean, there's some techniques, there's some things you could probably do to really stretch that out. I think yeah, Iron Root with their Elevage, what they're doing, and mm -hmm. a lot of other distillers have done that as well. I mean, able to go um, to the big barrels. Right. You might could push some push it a little further, uh, but at the same time, does that necessarily mean it's gonna be better? No. And so that that's the only that's where when I see the whole age or thing, especially it's when somebody drinks something that's already really outstanding at a at a good age like Maddie, and then oh I can't wait to taste it at 10 years. That's just to me, you're showing your ignorance really strongly. Um, yeah. and then I just, this is a random thought. Well, so your, your, your guys are like, you know, friends of yours, 10 or 12 years old. How much, how much of this is carrying over from, uh, just, you know, the impact of scotch for so long. 
and those older mm-hmm. age labels on scotch, you know. Yeah, um, true, a lot of true, because for years, and, nobody yeah. cared how old the bourbon was. Right, right. Yeah. But scotch, that's what that's what you had the esteem of the age label on there. The age but I've had some so older long. scotch that wasn't that great. I mean, I've had some right. older scotch that was phenomenal. Right. And I've had some older scotch that was just not not great. Was, and And also... Younger, especially younger peated scotch, right. is that's just a whole different animal. That's a that's a gorgeous animal. But that's that's also something trend wise that we didn't yes. see much of before. It's only been recently yeah. that that's starting to go that direction. Since especially you had the huge boom and all these uh, scotch distillers lost their stocks. They didn't have anything left, so they're having to use. You know, they've been resorting to having to use younger stocks and trying to market that and push that out there. But for so long, you never saw it. You hardly ever saw a scotch under ten years old. That's true. I think it's also the climate with that. Well, the, you're, people, it's people climate. are going into a much more aggressive whiskey in general, like across the board. Sure. People are willing to get into something that, as we say, will slap you around. You know, like uh, what, I can't read. <laughs> yes, he is. He is. He is <laughs> over oaked. <laughs> over oaked. Over smoked. Yes, he looks like a bunghole. <laughs> Right. <laughs> oh, Distilled multiple times. Yeah, many times over. <laughs> oh. Some more. That's another gorgeous, to me, prime example of, of young rye that is freaking fantastic. Mm-hmm. Okay, but thought on that. How many old ryes are actually out on the market? Not right. many. Not many, and and I think part was because because people weren't no one cared. We're paying attention. You know? well, that, that's what happened to Russell's Reserve in the first place. Like there was a whole section that they were almost questioning dumping. They were like we don't know what to do with this, and then I forget. Oh, I can't remember his name. I'm really sorry. He came in and he was like, "Well, what if we like make a brand to to honor you know to honor any?" And they're like, "Oh, yeah." We, we we can do that, and then they they started using that section for Russell's Earth, and then that's branched out, and that is, um, where everyone likes one hundred and one, as for the price point. I think Russell's mm-hmm. Reserve takes a couple of those edges off and rounds it, and just makes it a little bit happier. I, I'm oh, I, I like to go one hundred and one to Russell's, and then to like Masters Keep. I don't necessarily like a lot of the other in between wild turkey stuff. I kind of hop over to Russell's until it gets. What about what end. about rare breed? That's towards the end too. You know, what I mean, yeah, like yeah, I mean, I'm like one hundred and one like, rare breed Russell's single barrels, and and even still, those aren't you know you're not talking about twelve year old stuff. You're talking about like a, you know eight year old whiskey, but they know this whiskey. Do it this way; it's going to come out, and it's going to be great. Right. And eight and eight's a great year, but they have to do it that way to get at that. But it's it is really good. It is really good, but I would be afraid of of an of a wild turkey that was too old. I have not tried the seventeen, and the I old, haven't thirteen. But I, I would shit. I would kind of be afraid of it. It would be. It'd be all gamey. Mm-hmm. It'd be all tough. Yeah. So okay. okay, and one exception to the to the age thing is you know. Um, we'd had the samples of the single cast nation heaven Hill, right? which is really kind of an interesting thing. Cause it was already 12 years old before it left the United States. And then it spent the other 12 in Scotland. So you got a 24 year old bourbon, right? I mean, how many times have you had a bourbon close to that age where you're just like, <laughs> you know, just rough. I mean, just it's too oaky and everything else. But the idea that it could be aged like that, you know, you get the, Everything the of the um, the the in and out of the wood. I know I said that and I meant that, but you get that in in our climate or Kentucky's climate, and then you go to a much milder climate in Scotland. And you go and it just gets these subtle kisses back and forth right. there. Um, that that that's definitely one that's be an exception of okay, what can you do with age that would do something with maturity and. Um, and just be, you know, stand alone and be unique amongst something that's, you know, that's that old. The problem is, is with the whole climate of the whiskey boom, you got to see older stuff get bought up. 
end or get launched into the tar- you know price bracket that it's stupid right in the last like five years it's ridiculous <laughs> well you're starting to see some of the i, I knew all of that was coming as soon yeah. as i said it, it's like I, I don't care you know i don't care <laughs> and yeah, alan I-, I would i would let you <laughs> how about how about just the end <laughs> yeah <laughs> Oof. never on, out i need to read that <laughs> And this, I haven't had this Ranger Creek 44 Rye in a while. My God. I mean, it's. Yeah. Mm. Mm. All right. We're going to keep talking about this in a second, but let's talk. Speaking, hey. speaking of age, hi, Red. <laughs> Shots fired. I know. Respect your elders. Yes, yes. They can put the hex on you. All right. Um, like I said, we're going to. We're going to come back. We're going to keep talking about this, but let's talk about for one second. Next week's show, we're having Fred and Adam on um, from Distill America, which got shifted to May 14th. So we're going to talk about uh, this fantastic event, but talk about the progression of things that happened because <laughs> they also won the Yanking Our Chain Award in the- <laughs> The Minecraft yeah. Whiskey Awards this year. It uh, mainly because of all the things that happened in Wisconsin and down by Madison. It's they're extremely tight on things, so they had to reorganize things two or three different times. We're going to talk about that because putting on an event in this climate up until what two weeks ago was you know would have been extremely tough. So how you had to reorganize, replan, find something that works is yeah. going to work no matter what's going on in the right time frame. Um, we're going to go over all that next week with them. Um, plus, Fred's uh, Fred's drop. Fred has get, got me. Well, I got a bottle, and Fred's meeting me next this week, and it's uh, the older Dancing Goat Limousine Rye, aged mm-hmm. in port barrels. And we had that now, one. Is this? Is this the, the, the normal proof or is this cast strength? I'll have to take a look. I, w- I think it was a single barrel release, so I believe it was at cast strength, but I would okay. have to take a look back at the post. So we'll be picking that up. We're looking at that one. And ever since we had that port from Josh um, at Ranger Creek, um, I've been waiting to find another one that I would kind of blew my socks off like that one did. So... That one might be so. That's that's next uh, next Monday. Just want to get everyone prepped for that. Let me get back to the show. I'm gonna back up because I'm all fuzzy. So give me a second. I'll be right back. Patrick's fuzzy. Yeah. I'm not surprised. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I mean the topic right. is like I it's it's there's a lot of factors into why stuff is aged, right? But, um and why it is a, is a certain age and i'm i mean i'm not gonna lie if i see something that they're like oh it's this is x at this this age i do get excited for it. i would like to see like whiskeys that i've had that i really sure. like like i'm excited for when when iron root gets a whiskey at double digits because there's no way in hell iron root's going to put out something that is overly tannic oaky um three hundred dollars a bottle <laughs> You know, right. Uh, stuff like that that other people do. But so that excites me just because I know that the way that they're going to handle it is going to be great. Um, right. Yeah. You t- yeah. you trust you trust their evaluation. You trust what they're going to do. If they're going to release it, you know, it's going to be really good. Um, but yeah, just getting back to the basic does does age matter? Um, yes, but not in the sense that older is always better. I think that's, that's just a good way to put it. Line. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I don't know what That's is going point. on. I can't get this thing to like read. Oh, there it is. You've yeah. got a case of the Mondays. I do. Right. The Moon Days. Fucking kill someone if they say that. <laughs> Why should I change my name? He's the one who sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I recently yeah. watched that again. That's just. <laughs> oh <just> God. <laughs> God. <laughs> All right. Where, where were we before I had my my little issue there? We were we were we were talking about uh, we were talking about age. Mm. 
No, Ben, Ben, yeah, but Ben had a good comment about it. Hmm. But there, yeah, the, I, I think one of the things is that's really, um, well, it's been kind of not, I, I'm not going to say a thorn. I'm not going to say it irritates me, but when people just automatically, especially around me, they automatically see like a certain age and they're like, oh, that has to be good. Right. It doesn't have to be good, you know, but it might be good if you like really oaky shit. <laughs> You know, right. If you like things a certain way, you know, because you just like that, like that with the age, you know, um, and with and I'm sp- speaking more of spirits made in the United States than 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 Scotch because I, 12, 12 years on up on Scotch tends to be a sweet spot for me, um, but that's just because of you know where it's at, you know, right. Hmm. What the heck? We're getting ears. That's okay. So if I type something and you didn't get it in the chat, Viking Bourbon, yes. Uh, I'm going to reach out to Peter, and maybe sometime this summer we'll we'll be getting a hold of him again and talking about what's going on up there. Because they did have a good uh, wheat, and maybe that might be something they could beat in the wheat whiskey force. Like wheat. 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 No, Wheat. <laughs> Okay, so let me ask you a question to you guys. What is your favorite over eight year old American whiskey? Mm. And why? Simple answer. I got one. Simple answer was the old Fitzgerald 13 year old. I really enjoyed that one. Um, it had, for the, for the oak and wood in it, it was not overdone. But it was like extra rich. You know, it hadn't hit the part where it was going to kill you. It was still soft, but it was bold rather than being too tannic. Um, it, it still may land in one of the top five that I've had in my life. Because I just, <clears throat> I love that one. The whole bottle, it was, one, it was a mood setter. Um, and one on, an, on another one where I do have a rhetoric. It was 24 from Jeffrey Patron. That I think shows the other side of that, where it's it hit the other side, where it's too much oak, it's too much wood, it's mm-hmm. it still has it, it's still it's still drinkable and it's still and you know enjoyable, but it 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 hit the other edge of that. But I mean, in that case, you're talking about you know almost a decade. But right, I know. No, that. I know. I will say, I know. Back in the day, I had a. Uh, there was a Knob Creek, about a 14 year old when they were doing some of those single barrel releases, store picks like that, that at the time I used to think a few years ago was absolutely fantastic. But the last couple of times I went back to it, it was just to me, it was, yeah, just like licking an Oak board. Uh, it was just too much wood. Couldn't, couldn't cut that anymore. My palate has just changed. I don't prefer that at all. Um, I did um, St. St. Patrick's day. Same anyways, no. One day this past week, we were out of. I was uh, had a, a pour of uh, Boone's ben was County. Drunk and he chose. I had Sorry. a pour of Boone's Sorry. County, a fifteen-year-old, which it was just it was MGP, but it was a fifteen-year-old single barrel MGP, and uh, that was actually really, really darn good uh, for that age. So, in in recent mm-hmm. memory, that's that's probably the one. You popped up there really quick, Patrick. Um, I, I I would say my probably my two that I would I would always go after Russell Reserve Russell's Reserve single barrel or Knob Creek single barrel store picks. Um, those are ones I am I have never been disappointed with either one of them. Right. Um, and that's one where, I, but again, I know what I I know it's like this is good because it was designed this way. It was made to be this way. right. Yeah, the. So, uh... The Boone's County, I will say this, the notes, it wasn't, there was a not, I mean, the oak presence was decent, but I didn't feel like I was getting smacked around with oak. It was more leather, tobacco, uh, vanilla bean, those kind of flavors mm-hmm. coming through that were, to me, more a little more elegant, a little more refined. Um, but uh, those, I mean, not not knocking those Knob Creeks anyway, I think they've been, they've been very good. They just don't hit my flavor profile anymore. So. Yeah. And, it, you know, I like, yeah, um, Viking Bourbon said that about the 12 year. I had the 15. Mm-hmm. I didn't think the 15 was worth it. I thought the 12 was better. I think I, right. I, I like, and I like the nine just the, 
it uh, the single barrels, the the, the nine year single barrels. I think they're just they're they're just great. I'll bring this up. I've gotten to you know a lot of people have gone crazy over that Russell's Reserve twelve year that was released. Um, I've gotten to try that a couple of times and it's fine. But to me, the all the hoopla and the extra money you're going to pay for that bottle is not worth buying over the standard Russell's. Yeah, well, it's not. Far. It's not that much better. In in, to, in my opinion, but as far as impact, what was what do we have at the Still American Mike? It was uh, Balcones, uh, cast strength rye, rye. Cast, cast strength rye. I, yeah. Sorry, we we're talking about waiting for other stuff and it, like putting it, it up. It, like, it, it was like when you when you see in a movie when somebody takes over your body, because <laughs> it's just like you take a sip of it and it just enveloped you and just just like that great when you get that you know like people talk about the Kentucky hug, but it was like it was like a an, an invasion <laughs> of your soul, and, and I mean like if you had a, a really good Stag Junior, you know, or or Elijah Craig Barrel Proof or. Right. Um, oh God, what was the other one? I had a, a high proof driftless Glen Rye that was mm. just like that, where it's just like, I'm taking you over right now <laughs> and I'm not going to let you go. I love that. That stuff is, that stuff's just great. Okay. So here, and, and we've hit on this a little bit, but I, I want to go over Let Let's go by kind of category in, in America. Let's talk rye. What's the sweet spot for American rye whiskey? And I know we haven't seen a whole lot pushing into that that depth of a ten year old, but uh, wh where would you see it? Because I, I'll go this. Talking can can I throw something out? Yes. Are we gonna? And no. not. I'm not knocking them. Are we gonna automatically knock out anything that is MGP Rye? No, you don't have to knock. They're they they're made in the you know they're made in America. I know, but there's far, a reason oh, for as it. As far as. 90% of the people out there, they are, you know, they think they're drinking something else and it's MGP. So, I mean, they're, how much of the market is really them? It, yeah. Seriously, for rye. Right. <laughs> if, if, they, if they themselves are even 30%, they're at least 50. From everyone, you know, from them dumping to everyone else doing different twists, you know, doing all the startups for the bulk of the people around the country. Maybe not anymore. That would be interesting to see how that turns. But if you're, if we're going to talk MGP, then I'm still, okay, we'll take it. it. We'll take it out. Yeah. Then. I mean, we'll take it. No, MGP no, no, out. no. I'm just saying if we're, if we're going to talk MGP for me, MGP hits a sweet market around six years, six years plus. Okay. Now, as far, but again, I don't, there, I can't sit here and say rye and go, rye in general is better at this age because you've got different kinds of rye. You've got different distillation processes. You've got different things going on. And like when it comes to rye, hell, I'll take that Ranger Creek 44 that hits at two years or under on a lot of cases over just about anything else. Uh, but that's doesn't mean that's a sweet spot for rye because, like, same thing I was talking about, this the pin hook rye. In the three-year release here, yeah, it's okay. It's not that great. When it hits five to six years, it has shifted gears, and it's a whole other animal. Um, so same thing, Catoctin Creek. I mean, you're not dealing with an old rye from those guys, and it's just right. it's a phenomenal rye. But So my thought on that is two to six. It's kind of, the, in my mind, for American rye whiskey, your sweet spot is in the two to six right. zone. Because you people have had time to go over that realm, and not many have. You know what I mean? Or yeah. if it is, it's slightly bled back into some releases. But I think because there's so much good, extremely young rye that we've had that like popped out of nowhere. I mean, you got to right. include like a two, it, but in re, but like it is like it's about two to five, two to six years is where I think American rye whiskey hits. It's sweet spot from different regions across the country. Right. Well, I was gonna say, look at the Rocknar Rye up at uh, yeah. far north. I mean, freaking stellar shit. Yeah. And that's pretty damn young, but and especially for that yeah. climate that they're aging in. Yeah. That. 
we'll have to have Mike back on again yeah. because that's you start thinking about how cold it is there and everyone bitches right. and complains and I mean that's that's some pretty short growing season right. almost like and in Wyoming. The tasting we're going to have to do really soon is comparing uh, Leopold's three chamber, his first release, the five year with his uh, six year old that I've got the bottle of. Yeah. Cool. So we can see what an extra year does with that. So I heard yeah. about it. He tempted me with it when he texted me about it. He said Ben has it. And I yeah. still haven't seen the fucking bottle. It's, it's been holding out. It'll I, heard, it'll get I, hear, I hear the bottle has this much left in the goddamn thing. How about the fact? I'll go grab it right. How about the fact the bottle hasn't even been opened? Yet? I just fucking with it. Been, <laughs> been sitting here on that bitch and haven't even opened it yet. So. Hmm. Um, I don't know. It's, I did plug in my device. I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> Good stuff. So everybody should know Pat's in his new studio. Sorry, right his new bar. Yeah, well, something's going on screwy here. I might be losing battery here in a second. I might be coming back on my phone. <laughs> Thumbs up with this power outlet. It's uh, it's not working. So mm. we'll we'll see. We'll see what uh, happens. We'll see what happens. Right. God damn it. Mm. That's not cool. I'll have to figure that out by next uh, next week. A new gimp room, yeah, but it's all windows, Eli. So everyone can see it. It's pretty exciting. <laughs> the gimp in the glass cube. <laughs> yeah, the, the voyeur, the voyeuristic gimp. That's his new right. handle on Instagram. <laughs> no pawn shop basements for him. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, next thing you know, they're gonna have a spot at the Met. <laughs> final tile. Yeah. Mitch, yeah. Final tile. And and a floor drain. Right. Oh no, no, that was at the old house. That that was fucking gross. It was in the basement, and there was a floor drain, which makes sense. And then along the one wall, there was like a little door, and you could go in. And there was a seat. And the next room was a shower, and the shower just drained out into the drain in the floor. It was a fucking kill room. I there was it, a furnace. And no, what, you guys no. are actually the Clopex, right? No, no what? Huh? The Clopex. <laughs> <laughs> Should I bring you some sardines the next time I see you? No, I hope not. No. But no, that was it was disturbing. I didn't like that part of the old house. So um, But you're in the basement. All right, hold on. I gotta get to my phone. The shit's going it's dying for some reason. Hold on. I'm out. Fuzzy out. Right. <laughs> Just ducks out. <laughs> He's gonna do that thing where it's like I'm going down the stairs now, right. and he starts to lower himself. I'm back. <laughs> I'm taking the elevator now. <laughs> See what happened though? Mm-hmm. All this talk. Through. I'm got dark. Uh oh. <laughs> Next uh, thing you know, here comes the black lights. Yeah. <laughs> no. Stuff no, no black lights. Whatever you do, no black right. lights. <laughs> <laughs> There's a strobe it's light. Like a Just a strobe light. In, the background. <laughs> Just in case anyone out there has a sensitivity towards this, there'll be strobe lights. Whew. Oh, that's got some heat more than I remember. Mm. Uh, no, Alan. No. I heard that's what the basement's like. I don't know. Or Alan's basement. Or mine. <laughs> I got my I got my hundred year old basement. Mm. Mm. So, so we're so we're saying I eight. How about this? And we got into just rye, bourbon. I don't know. I think that's a tough one because regionally it pushes even further. Because some are two, some two year Texas whiskeys are fantastic, right? So that that opens up the gap if we're talking country to like a two to like a twelve year old in my mind, as far as being like a sweet spot. Um, just because Texas lowers the, you know, the ability, you know, the chance right. to go down a lot lower than other places in the country. I, I'm curious to see what people can do with single malts here in the U.S. And at the same time, taking uh, bourbon, bourbon distillate and aging it in used barrels versus 
new barrels and what you could push age wise there. I'm not saying that you have to, but I think that's one way that if you want to push an older whiskey without over oaking, see what that well, oxidation ask, does over time. So here's another another question to ask you too. What's a whiskey that is four year? Not that question. What's a whiskey that is four years or under that you really love that you're the most curious to see what happens with over time? Mm. Under under four under years at four this years. moment. Four 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 or under. Man. What was some of that? How old was some of that stuff from Real Spirits? Was that two? Yeah, no, typically I, in that range. Yep. Oh, oh man, there's so many things here. I mean. Okay, no way. Um, Icarus is older. That's like five six, so that's out of the picture. Because I was like, I was just getting to some ranges here. Where I was thinking ten ish. Kevin, like I've tried, thing. I've tried Iron Root at six years. Mm hmm. Yeah. Oh, if you're talking about them, it's they got the they got Hazmat two coming out April ninth. Yep. Put yep. your put your fucking Shut. name in. Your dirty right. whore mouth. <laughs> Dude, they got two releases that day. If, if I was down in Texas. We're ending broadcast now. I'm yeah. thinking about taking that trip. If we were all talking about it, I'm like, guess what? I'm going in April. <laughs> no, I, 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 got, I got my name in. We'll see what happens. All right. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Mm. And yeah, yeah, Tim, I agree. I, I've heard the rumors of the of an older mellow corn or some that somebody's done it or had or whatever. I'd like to try that. I like mellow corn. I just like I'd like to see what happens to it. Sure. I'd like to I'd like to try mellow corn at cast strength. Hmm. Sorry, I'm just I'm just playing around with that whole thought process of Ben, you come up with one yet? Because I'm having some You know, actually Kevin just nailed it. The golden beaver rice bourbon. That would be one okay. I'd love to see pushed out a little bit just to see where that would go. I'd like we to need say a, Rua we need or something, California but it's not one. true because that one is, you know, that's like pretty home Christmas where it was at, at least when Bruhilda was behind, uh, right. behind making it. Um, <clears throat> man, something. I would like, yeah. and I don't know, how, did, has Gary done a... Uh, Older than four year old bloody butcher, hundred percent. He's uh, he does have bottle and bond out. Out. Okay. Um, I just. Mm. But I I imagine Gary's probably got older in there that he's kind of playing with. Yeah. The fucking foxes in the backyard yipping around and making all sorts of noise. I'm nah, pretty sure think. those aren't foxes, but I have a forest in my backyard. You haven't sure been there. Aren't, sure, those aren't gimp noises. Well, you yeah. know, they roam the yard <laughs> at night. They get some freedom. Mm. Ooh, God, that is still so tasty. Which one? Which one did you have? Oh, I've just been. Uh, I did a mix of. Mm -hmm. Oh, you bastard! Yeah, Harabe's old-fashioned mix. And then I splashed some of the Lost Lake on top of it. Oh, well, look at you. Because who, who thinks 30% is enough? Not me. I like to taste yeah. booze in my drinks. Hmm. Um, so I guess we're, we're making the statement, and I think I, I almost did this at the beginning, is age matters, but not as much as ingredients. And and tactics. Age I would add to it as make as Mitch said, age is an ingredient. It's an ingredient. Yeah. Yeah. But it's an... age matters. God. Just not that older is better. Always. That's true. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But yeah, like you said, that Sam Houston we had and the Calumet. I didn't think that was, you know, knock your doys off anything. Nope. Nope. It was uh, that, oak. That, <laughs> it was so much oak. Okay, right. that what was it? The twenty-three-year-old rye, the Chechen rye. 
Okay, that was no, that, that was, was that that that's a single malt. The single malt. Uh, uh, Czechos, Czechoslovakian single malt. Okay, that okay, but I, that that was impressive for that. It should be for twenty three. I thought it wasn't. I thought it wasn't. But yeah, but that's malt. also it wasn't just a single malt. It was in and it was in Czech oak and this and this and this and that. You know whatever, but. Um, it's like so. One of the things that one of the whiskeys I really thought about when talking about age was because I I had some because of St. Patrick's Day, um, the uh, the the Middleton Der Gaelic that I have, mm. which is 17, 19 year old Irish whiskey, but it was also um, a wood experiment and it was aged in Irish wood and you know there's all these things on there that they tried with it. Um, it it needed that age to get to get to that point. You know, just like um, uh, the Mizanara oak, you know, young Mizanara oh, yeah. apparently apparently tastes like ass, but you let it go in there over time and it actually it actually works. But again, it's because it has to have that in order to get that on there. The whiskey that that was made probably was pretty good, but when it got stuck in the Mizanara at it, you know, for a short period of time, wasn't very good. It right. needed that to come out because it was one of the, you know, oak being one of the ingredients on it. But well, one of one of the factors um, you can talk about with uh, we've heard this discussion is Todd Leopold talk about aging the uh, the three chamber. Yeah, you know, does age matter? You know, the way that came off that still, um, what do you release yeah. it? Three oh. years, four years, it wasn't ready. It took it took five years before it all of a sudden, and it was like those last six months. For it really all of a sudden turned a corner and became something yeah. something really special. So I want to know how many he how many barrels he's sitting on at to see how far it goes and how much because because you know he is. You know he's charting every bit of that for age to see where the stuff's at. I've been and in I'm, I've I'm been curious. in the barrel house. Yeah. There's there's a there's a good there's a good amount of barrels sitting there. Yeah. Well. They they do a good job of tracking things. Yeah, you know, and I and, and I, I'd I be curious to try it at different at different young ages. I I because you know everything you wasn't aged back progress, in the day. Right? Yeah, because, I I I would really like to see the progression of that. Because holding it, like you said, until it's something you're proud of and think it's you know like you said until it turned the corner, you're like holy shit, um, it's difficult because. What there's got to be a little bit of time in there where if it's not quite right, you're like, "Come on, turn six! Come on, turn! Come on, turn!" And like the panic, the panic of everything you put in there. Not it's just like maybe this was bullshit. Maybe this didn't work. I mean, you know, like, oh, are we fucked? <laughs> so no, I, <clears throat> that you know that. That has got as a distiller in my mind has got to be like sitting in there on some things when you put something in, it's like this is garbage, or one of those things where you forget about it till you know you didn't even know it was there. You know, we heard a couple of places right. where they forgot about barrels and like fuck, we didn't know we had this, we brought it out, and there's just there's this tiny bit left. That's not funny, you just might fucking chupacabras and shit like that. I'm waiting for angler fish to come up behind you. <laughs> Pat starts going to the light. Right, <laughs> run to just, the light, Patrick. You, you just hear thudding noises and a, and a yeah. smash of a glass, and then nothing. Go, and then the Carol gets knocked over like a Blair Witch Project. What a crap movie! <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, I lost my speaker. <laughs> Blair Witch Project, crap right. movie. They didn't oh, scare you movie theater. Not. Okay. Not a lick. I thought that was the dumbest fucking movie. <laughs> Sorry, that was a that was one of those. By the time that movie was done, it was like I want that hour and a half or two hours of my life back or whatever that was because that was just ridiculous. I remember everyone being afraid of that. Oh, there! I actually worked with somebody at the time that literally thought it. I had to. It took me a half Tickle. hour. It took me a half hour to talk them down because they thought it was real. They thought it was Happy. actual captured footage. From somebody, <laughs> I was like, "This is not a documentary. Hey, this is a movie. On, you got it, you it was got filmed it. that way." Ben, ben you and the best part is, the best part is, those people vote. <laughs> <laughs> you aren't wrong, Mike. You aren't wrong. You got to promote that shit. I, I was always a friend. When you see someone like being, you know, push them over the edge. 
put you know keep telling them it's true yeah there's different accounts it's all over the internet i i did that to my to my friends like yeah it's it's like a real thing they had to pay to get the rights for this uh, yeah it, so it was, it was worth it to see people scream in the seats when they were with me my girlfriend right. was very squeamish she wanted to in the beginning of the movie scream like when uh drew barrymore gets killed she was ready to go after that she's like fuck it let's go i'm out of here <laughs> I was like, no, we've only seen like five minutes of the fucking movie. We're going to see what happens. I'm like, I already like it. Like, that's a good twist about that. Kill the first person I thought was a whole star. Good. <laughs> yeah. We'll have, to, we'll have to, we need to tell Sherry to come and sneak up behind you. Right. <laughs> we, so we had this a true story at work. We had, uh, well, this, this person, was, she was kind of nervous, but we had a really large dark room and we had it all planned out. I hid behind this piece of equipment in the dark room. This other person lured her in. So these two ladies having this conversation in the dark room and I was like following the voice and Emmy was pitch black in there. And so I went up to the one that was really nervous and I, I put my hand on, on her shoulder, but I did it like, like that <laughs> while she was having a conversation and, right. and uh, yeah, she pissed herself. <laughs> 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 but it was fun. <laughs> sorry. I'm not sorry. Good friends. Yeah. No, it was good. It was a good time. So I, I'm I'm finishing up on the Harbinger because I I I I nursed the hell out of it. Um, but eventually it's gonna have to go away because it's three years old now. So um you know what? That that's a good idea, Eli. Because ninety percent of the people remember what a dark room is, and I did work in one for a while. So. Yeah. So Kevin's yeah. question: He wanted to know what that six-year-old uh, harbinger tastes like. Oh, uh, I'll do you one better. I'll bring you some, Kevin, next mm -hmm. time we get together. Uh, it is so much richer than the four-year-old. Yeah, it is. It, it's it has it's a richness a, to it. It's bold and not in a like trample you way just in this lovely richness and everything kind of like i was right. describing that uh 13 year old old fitzgerald that six-year-old uh icor i think is what it is when they mm -hmm. released it mm -hmm. their five-year anniversary release and yeah yep mm. that was vicious. yeah but yeah iron iron roots the one which I didn't answer my own question. Iron Roots, the, the one that I'm most excited for to see what they do, just because I've been there and talked with them about what they're doing and how and why they're doing it. They're going to do it in a way that's mm -hmm. going to, I think it's going to blow your damn doors off. Right. Yeah. Well, they're, they're one of the few people that are out there making brandy that are probably planning a 15, 20 year old brandy. I know they're starting with. They're, they're what they got right now. They're pushing for ten years. So I know, but they're you know yeah, like the imagine. outlier. Yeah, exactly. You know the outlier plan was to be like this is where we really think the sweet spot. And just because in America, I'm going to be honest, it's hard for Americans to think generationally. I think I think that I think that brings into a lot of issues with this age thing. Is that we have right. a generational issue that we do we don't really bridge the gap of thinking more than five to ten years i mean it's mm. you know thinking past that's hard for a lot of people or to plan i don't know hell i have a problem with that let's be honest you know yeah plan planning that far out usually usually doesn't go so well but right. the people who do make plans like that are usually achievers you know and stick to that grind so, I don't know. I can't read that. Oh yeah, that's yeah, that's a hundred percent right, uh, Kevin, about uh, what Ironwood's doing through the managing of the aging of whiskey. Right, and with them, it's it's managing like the flavor and the proof mm -hmm. over time. Is what I everything. Think yeah. Yeah. Yep. Good stuff. All right. So, okay. <laughs> I don't think anyone changed anyone's mind about anything necessarily. Not not that we were going out to right. do that. No, we were eating some space in the next show. But I think it was a good discussion. 
Yeah, I think it's one that needs to be had on a regular basis because I think there's too many people with misconceptions about age and yeah. its impact. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to see because everyone, I mean, there are the scales that show you where like age is where the age drops off. And at most point, usually it's 23 to 25, even like in some most scotches, but in most American whiskey, once it gets over like 20 ish is where most people think it's going to start curving down flavor wise. It'll be interesting to see th things getting pushed to that to that edge limit. But the problem is in, with mainstream stuff is that the price point is going to be ridiculous the whole way. Mm -hmm. Like the whole, the whole thing has been pushed to the point where right. Fuck. They're like, they're trying to sell caviar or whatever. And I know it's tight, but I mean, it ain't like the barrel. You, uh, yeah. Somebody, I mean, they got a recoup. If someone can cost. sell off a bunch of that 14 year old stuff that comes out with like nine different labels, like, Oh, look, this is here. We Which they have. have. I think it's, oh, I, I think it's about gone. Yeah. The, all believe. that, all that beam stuff that had been sitting out there forever, I think it's about gone. I mean, because everybody bought it. Yeah, but if if you or if you have, if you're gonna dump that, are you really thinking about pushing age limit further? You, in my mind, you already thought maybe that was past its limit because you yeah. weren't using it. You know what I mean? I, right. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know where that went. I've had a few drinks now, but I'm still talking. <laughs> I'm rambling. And it's getting darker into the mm -hmm. void. Stick with us for next episode where they all go black. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And just a reminder wait, wait, for anyone on the steps again, I think I hear it. Anyone who is, uh, anyone who didn't do it earlier. Well, yes. Vote, vote for Matt Bay. Get, right. get, get, uh, get mad. His votes on there. There's three mm -hmm. and a half days left. So they're not going to vote out. for him. There's a, a ringer, which I, I do, you know, I didn't read the rules. It's not my contest, but why, when you've started the voting, you would allow somebody else to enter the contest does not make any sense. Right. However. Okay. And he's handling this like a champ, but he is. If you follow, you follow Matt on Instagram, read his post. Okay. If you don't look him up on Instagram. Mm -hmm. They had a really nice converse, public conversation about it back and forth, which was good. Uh, and nothing against her. She's great. She's just, mm -hmm. because I wouldn't blame her. I would sign up for it as well. But why would you let someone sign up four days left in the competition who also right. has a ton of followers? Yeah. Um, but yeah, Matt, I think, yeah, Matt, if, if Matt won that money and we, with the house he just got and his barn, he could outfit that and have dust collection and all kinds of stuff on there. I mean, it's literally Matt and a printer and a hand router <laughs> that's doing all of his work. Mm hmm. Yeah. yeah, it's also that. Oh yeah, if you're into basketball and bourbon basketball and March Madness, I can't. Can I legally say March Madness? I think I just did. So fuck you, CBS. You can't. You just can't say Super Bowl, Super Bowl, Super Bowl, or no, sing Happy March Birthday. Madness had a thing about it too for a little bit. Super Bowl. I'm gonna yeah, sing Happy welcome. Birthday. Happy Birthday. Whatever Super those two Bowl. old ladies' names. Well, actually, I think they took away their their rights to charge people an arm and a leg. Fuck them. Sorry. Those are exactly some are bullshit. How can you explain something when you can't even use the words to explain it? I, I made fun of my wife for saying like the super ball game. And you know what? She's fucking half at what you're going to say because you can't call it the Super Bowl. It was the super, super game on one channel. And I'm like, are you serious? Like, I don't know. We're, sorry. I, I got to take it off this way. I'm getting back into my fucking weekly rant about fucking sports. I don't know. I got to pull up there for a second. <laughs> yeah. We had sports ball. Sports ball. <laughs> yeah. I did. I did watch a commercial. I should have seen it before and I thought I'm going to watch this again because I haven't seen it forever. And it was Dusty Rhodes uh, speaking for a car dealership in Florida, which all you, all you had to do was say Dusty Rhodes in Florida. <laughs> And I was, I was all in, but it had Dusty. This guy, it's like he had no idea <laughs> that Dusty was going to be Dusty. Uh, it was, it was beautiful. I loved every bit of it. Oof. And also speaking of, of sports ball, my Iowa State Cyclones. Yeah. Right. Breaking uh, brackets yeah. and kicking some ass. 
Hey, I didn't even watch the game, but they deserve to lose from the sounds of it. So that just is the way it is. <clears throat> I, yeah, I, they weren't yeah. looking good at the end of the season, so I wasn't expecting a glorious thing. No. I saw the Cyclones play the last time they were actually in Milwaukee for the NCAA tournament. I was there, and they were they were a fun team to watch. So I rooted for them then. They won one. They won two. But fucking congratulations to them moving on. Sorry. I am. Maybe we might have to have a sideshow. Drunken sports talk. Just like ESPN. <laughs> Just yeah. like ESPN. People that only half care about the sports. Right? Yeah. If but, that. I, but we'll be drunk enough to yell like Stephen A. Smith. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know. No. <laughs> Nope. This is gonna be like this is gonna be like drunken history, except drunken sports. Oh my god! I love that show. Yeah. I love that that's, show. That's no. one of the, that's a fantastic show, right? No. You know what? An oh, should that be a uh, Alan Bishop Barkhart co-op event? Uh, drunken history of distilling. Yeah, <laughs> I like. Yeah, drunk history is awesome. Can, can you take it? <sighs> anyway. Mm. Yeah, I'm really enjoying the the iron route here. Mm. Florida car dealers, damn it! Mm -hmm. Anything Florida, just Florida I, in I, general. I saw there was another video popped up, and it it was a uh, an like seventy year old couple in Florida doing karaoke, but they were singing a hip hop song. But she was doing a great job, and then the guy did a rap. I mean, and this was like total. 70 year old guy jeans were probably above his his belly button uh probably wearing velcro shoes everything else but completely nailed it but but it was also it's like eh, I'm, i bet this is from florida and then you <laughs> you see like yeah they're from florida <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. all right i think i think we're at a good uh I think we're at a good point to maybe yeah. cut this. And then, We've uh, solved all the world's problems. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Age matters, but not, not that much. Well, it's, it's, I, it's, I a, say, it's a flavoring component rather than being a major factor. Be mind, be mindful of it. And when people, well, yeah. yeah. It's, well, it's different. Like, well, that got into the whole scotch thing for me where I was like, there it does to me, it, it does matter in scotch. Right. And I'm not being a dick, but I mean, it really, things there turn it. 10 to 12 years old and that, yeah. and that 12 to 21 and and there when you're getting into like almost a 17 through 25 year old is where i think scotch hits its fucking pull i'm right. sorry melt your knee shit that that for scotch it's like 17 to 25 my thoughts sorry yeah, I just I, for me it's a, so age more absolutely more. age absolutely matters just not in the sense that older is better necessarily. Yeah. Just too too many other factors that come into play but age is an important factor and it does matter. Just Unless you're talking older about older single guys. <laughs> Oh, looking God. good, baby. Woo. Damn. Uh, I had a few drinks. Yeah. I'll give you a wink, baby. <laughs> good oh, stiff. I wink. had a flashback to when we were in bed together. I don't know how to take that. <laughs> I was the middle spoon. <laughs> 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 It's true. You were the middle spoon. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> he Stumbled across that picture here not that long he ago. Was he was comforted yeah. and comforting at the same time. Man. That's right. I was providing warmth in two directions. <laughs> <laughs> one radiant and one like HVAC. <laughs> <laughs> Uh. <laughs> Wait, I was on the back side. I, I, I don't remember this. Uh. 
Yeah. Mm. Oh, so <clears throat> I remember a lot of not sleeping that night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There you, was a I lot love, of that. I love you, but I feel awkward. <laughs> <laughs> More of a more of a, ch a, a chopstick, Tim. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. That's the first time I really spit on the show. <laughs> but what I was gonna, I was gonna say, on, that's coming up on about a one year anniversary mm -hmm. here too, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. What well, well, was special night for that? <laughs> yeah. Dis Distill America is coming up next Monday. Yes. Jump on for that. If you haven't gotten tickets, get tickets. I still may make an appearance there. It will be an outstanding time. Week after that is super exciting as well. We have our good friend Bo Cumberland coming on. If you haven't seen the stuff he's doing, you should get over to My American Spirits Journey and check that out because Bo makes some five-minute uh, movies about distilleries. I think he just had one today about <laughs> Glens Creek. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, he, he's taking documenting distilleries and the, and what they're doing um, to a very authentic and honest and like upfront level. But the video is very high quality. So we're excited to have him on. Um, caveat. We're in a movie he's making. So I'm gonna, see. This is full, full disclosure. Full disclosure. Yeah. Okay. Full disclosure. We are. But uh, did he just mute himself? Did yeah. Just, no. Oh, I, no. Uh, red is before Bo. Oh, red is because Bo, Bo, Bo moved. Right. Yeah, Bo moved. That's right. Bo Bo slipped around. He, he moved around. Oh, and his right. kitty cat changed their dates. They did. But uh, red's coming on. That's oh. Does he have a shirt like that? That's beautiful. She should wear that more often at the lake. She she does now, and there are other examples that may or may not make an appearance during the show. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll be talking we'll be talking about the Patoka Lake Winery, which I know is not something we typically do, but like I said, right. it is a travel destination because they are not only a winery, they have a marina, and they're building a brewery, distillery. And uh, hotels for a place to stay. So they're setting you up for the whole weekend if you're right, going yeah. there. And we love places like that that are a base point, but also take up a whole weekend of enjoyment. So yeah, we're yeah. having her on for that. Um, back I hope Larry weekend. Bird comes to their grand opening. Well, he should. I mean, I'm inviting him. And Johnny Coogs. And Johnny Coogs. Well, yeah. no. Well, I'm not. Larry, doing Larry, two. I'm gonna. Larry, I can only work one angle, and it's Larry, and that's because he heard about the Green Fairy absinthe that they're going to be releasing. That's going to be named after him. You, but I think Larry is going to do some classes on uh, being Father of the Year. <laughs> Holy shit! That's now you're not helping me get him on the thing. That's not. <laughs> How, Dude, how to ignore your children by <laughs> Harry Bird. <laughs> right. <laughs> home, oh, really. home, home haircuts by Larry Bird. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> how is really going to try to get him on the show? It's like he ain't going to watch. Uh, no, gonna oh, there's no way in hell. There's no there's way, no way in watch this hell team. Larry will ever come on the show. Oh, I don't mean on the show, but he could come up. So to that, I say, to... <laughs> you don't know this. You don't know the sway. Larry, Larry, that's for you. And that's for the horse you rode in on. <laughs> Man, you just that much disrespect for the, the for Larry Bird. For basketball Jesus. Yes. For basketball. <laughs> 80s basketball Jesus when it mattered right. a little bit more than it does now. Yeah. I heard Letterman and Rose. Well, Letterman, you know, top 10 list. I do get that was the only other reason I, I knew Spirits of French Lake was the top 10 list. 
by David Letterman. I did. I didn't know there was a horror that had a parade. <laughs> had I known that, I'd have been on. I'd have been on top of that earlier. <laughs> well, with that. <laughs> Great. Sponsors yeah. love us. We have sponsors. We have sponsors. Right? <laughs> I'm not sharing that with anybody. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, for those those people that are left, <clears throat> I'm going to be bringing this up in the future. But if you would like a sample of High Wire's uh, Benton Smoked uh, white whiskey. We're going to be having a tasting of that coming up. Um, we've already talked to uh, Scott. He'll be involved. He's, we're working on Alan from Benton's Ham. Um, if you would like a sample, get a hold of me. Um, as I say, or anyone in the den, or email, you know how to get a hold of us. That's all sorts of ways. Um, and we will get you a sample. And then you can go on to Benton's Ham site like I had to do. And you can order some ham, and you can have some of the whiskey that was smoked in Benton's Ham's uh, smokehouse while we're having it, and then taste some of the smoked meat as well. And their hams are sought after. Um, so getting some of the, there's two different ones. I think there's like a lightly smoked and one that's like a year. And then if you want to go crazy and get the whole ham that's been there for like three years or something, you can do that, but that's like 200 bucks. But we'll, we will, I will hook you up with the, the sample. You have to get the, the meat yourself, but there are packets that are, they're only like eight bucks. So it's not crazy for like, you know, we need, we, so. we need a ham, a ham mule, a ham mule. He'll, mm -hmm. they ship to you. Oh, well, <laughs> never mind. You just go on their website. <laughs> My problem is I'm getting that and some bacon. Was your daddy a meat burglar? <laughs> and you know what? That, that brings up a good question. Kevin? That's disgusting. That's disgusting. <laughs> like he stole two fine Christmas hands and shoved it on the back of your dress. <laughs> it looked beautiful. Yeah, that's right. You do I buy you a fish sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're, uh, you know what? Just for fun, uh, we're not leaving quite yet, just because we have a couple minutes. Let me copy the invite because <laughs> this shouldn't be. But we shouldn't really be talking on it oh, anymore. We're gonna Lord. cut that out. But uh, if you want to join us in the chat for a couple minutes, I'm gonna put that up here. There you go. Oh God. Yeah. Well. Um, <laughs> wow. They only said we could say fuck three times as sponsors. Do you think we broke that rule tonight? I'm still stuck on the fact that we have sponsors. We well, should. I thought you we should, were right. we're, we're sponsoring ourselves. We're the Ricky Bobby of whiskey review channels. Well, that's true. Mm. Oh, someone say, oh, yeah, we are kind of the Ricky Bobby of, uh, of whiskey review shows. Mm. We did have offers as a. Uh, Furniture store in Kansas City. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I did. Sorry, that was like one of my favorite ones. I thought they were great. Look, they were like, uh, how does that even link up at all? <laughs> any, they're like, if you if you mention us and people come in to, to buy a couch or anything, they say like, we yeah. start on my whiskey den. We'll like kick you back some money <laughs> to come in and buy some furniture and shit. And I was like, this yeah. is fucking fantastic. <laughs> no. <laughs> Hard Mike, no. We could hook him up for Mike. Yeah. No. But hey, how the mm. fuck you you shouldn't be seeing shit, man. Don't let Bo Bo shouldn't be showing you all sorts of extra clips. You should have to wait to the final release. And it's true. If you don't know, Alan's not a great wrestler. It's it's true. I'm just I'm said <laughs> it. I'm gonna say it again. That's that's true. But that was before he got his uh his American flag jacket, which really makes the whole thing. Okay. Okay. All right. So are we saying this, this happens at the premiere? Is it like a, you know, a little throw down too? 
motherfucker. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay, but if I have a <laughs> yeah. Dave, I love you so much more. That is <laughs> so we've had down there. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's fine. Well, they bought it if it said unpainted off hands. <laughs> Alan has to carry me on his What kind of jammies was he wearing? I don't know. They had Yodas and shit on them. <laughs> Oof. Yeah. All right, then. I think All that's right. good for this evening. We will see our loyal fans next Monday night when we'll be talking to real guests. A real topic that we're planned for. Real people. Real yeah, people. Han- handsome Fred Swanson. Not these fake plastic Damn. trees sitting on here. Now. And, and Casey. I love Casey. He's and like, Adam, well, I, yeah. I have to. Oh, Adam Casey. Sorry. I I just love him because he's like, well, I got to be at work. That's okay. <laughs> I don't really care. I, I, <laughs> this is going to be setting up at, at the liquor yeah. store. Which is if, if he rings people up while he's on the show, I think it's going to be awesome. <laughs> Oh, that has to be a, like a finish your drink moment. If Adam rings yeah. someone up during the show, <laughs> everybody take a drink of Dancing Goat. <laughs> oh. All right, boys and girls, thank you for stopping in and hanging out with us. Um, we're always happy to have you guys spend some time with us, but stop it next week and. Uh, I don't know. First half of the show will be good. We'll probably go off the rails at the tail end like we always do. But, I mean, what more can you ask for? So, remember, it's not the size of the den or how or dark the age. It is. Or the age. Or how dark and <laughs> light it is inside the den. Um, it's a love of whiskey? Yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah. It could size be. Size matters. <laughs> size matters? <laughs> More than age? Is that is that what we're, is that the truth? It depends on what we're talking about. Well, I guess whiskey. Is, well, age, age, mm. age, or age of size to barrels. You're talking whiskey tonight. <laughs> you know, as eight. What if it's a smaller barrel? Does age matter even more in there? Mm, girth. Oh, oh, it does. I think it does. Hold on. Oh no, I'm back. How do you like that? <laughs> Okay, nobody covered on. It was like a. <laughs> it was. Oh my god! Did you... <laughs> All right, folks. So now that you see that I'm letting people in, you can hop in the chat anytime you want. We're not leaving. So we'll see you later. Remember, it's not the size of the den; it's the love of whiskey. Cheers, everybody. <laughs> No, no, we're not. I need another drink. Uh, uh, okay, what happened in your room, Pat? I mean, oh, it was. I don't know what happened. It went the, completely the dark. Outlet is the only. He was, like, he was there's, reading. Yeah, there's a top and a bottom outlet, and apparently the out, bottom one is not working <clears throat> properly. So my battery on my computer started to die. So right. I had to make a decision. Was it the light or I don't know? I didn't want to switch over to my phone. It's a pain in the ass. If you knew how long it took me to set up the camera beforehand, it was a fucking disaster for the show. Like it was on a tripod that Gavin thought was a transformer, so he used it to kill Thanos. So my tripod is fucked up at the moment and it's hard to get lined up. So it, I don't know. I just made a decision. So I'm in the dark. I look like I'm by a campfire. Mm-hmm. And Kevin's got the reverse. He's dark, but his background is light. <clears throat> you guys are like a negative of each other. I, is is Kevin my father? I feel like this is some weird whiskey Star Wars <laughs> shit going on. You should. I do. All right. We'll see everyone later. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>
Oh, I thought that it was just kept going like the intro. <laughs>